Radiant Black, issue number four from Image Comics. So, I've been reviewing every issue so far, and I will say that this series has been pretty, uh, pretty sad in the sense that it hasn't lived up to its potential. It has a lot of promise, but it, ha it has been nothing but filler. This series has more filler than uh, Naruto or One Piece or Bleach. Like, it has more filler than an anime series. Thankfully, uh, we actually get a plot in this issue. Things actually happen. It only took them four issues to get there, but hey, at least we're finally going somewhere. I mean, literally, like, the, the, the third issue was pretty much the entire issue was the main character struggling with writer's block. I don't ask me why they decided that that was a good idea for an issue, but they did, and it was boring as hell to read. But thankfully, we're, we're going somewhere here. So yeah, let's get into this. So we start off with uh, Nathan, and he's having a, uh, a dream where he meets this alien robotic creature, or whatever. And it kind of says, you know, like, welcome to existence. And uh, basically throughout the issue, there, he, he has the dream again. And the alien is pretty much saying, like, you know, like, um, do you wish to have a partnership? Do you wish to be, like, synced up? Like, right now, our partnership is incomplete, but we can uh, we can sync up. We can become one in a sense, but um, our connection will be final. It'll be permanent for the rest of your life until you die. Um, like a war is near and uh, the other radiant, radiant red, will kill you and your entire planet unless you kill him first. Do you accept this? Will you take his own life? Do you accept the, the this deal? So I guess we get kind of like a, an Ultraman thing there, except Ultraman doesn't actually kill people, <laughs> but the whole like alien kind of merging with the uh, with the human and becoming like one, but at the same time having two separate minds. That's all Ultraman. Then yeah, then we cut to uh, Marshall, Nathan's friend, and we get an entire page where he feeds his dog a snack. And then we get an entire second page where he's texting Nathan about meeting up to test out Nathan's powers. This can be easily condensed down into one page. Not even one page, I'll say one panel with the mini panel within. So what I'm thinking is uh, we have we have Nathan laying on the couch. Maybe he get, he's like holding out uh, his hand, feeding the dog with one hand while watching the TV and then we hear, we see his phone buzz and then we can have a little mini panel within that panel. And in that panel we see um, a text from Nathan that says, hey Marshall, are you free? And then boom, we, we immediately cut to Nathan and Marshall out in the woods getting ready to test their powers. So we can have that immediately. Like we can condense two pages into one panel, I guess technically two panels, but just one panel side size and then boom we cut right to the what we need to get to instead we, we were two pages in uh before we get to the actual them testing out their powers like the biggest problem with this is so much filler so much unnecessary crap the the editor who i'm not going to name because i don't want to ever call people out but the editor needs to get their <laughs> butt kicked into gear and start doing their actual job and start condensing the hell out of this so we just get the meat of the story, what we actually need. This is There's too much fluff. There's too much wasted pages, too much wasted panels. Uh, one of the big things that um, we're taught in like writing school and stuff is that uh, you never start your scene in the beginning of a scene. You always start in the middle of, uh, of something. You start your scene in the middle and you end your scene before it finishes. I know that sounds kind of weird, but basically in and out. Boom, boom. Just give us what we need. Uh, I'll give you an example. So let's, let's use Seinfeld. Seinfeld is really good with this. So Seinfeld, you'll have George Costanza doing something. Maybe there's some kind of action. Uh, he's talking to, to, to a lady and something happens. And then we immediately cut to Monk's Coffee Shop where George and Jerry are in the middle of a conversation about what just happened. If the writer for Ready and Black was writing that scene, then we would have George you know, having his confrontation with the, the lady, the thing happens, then we'll see George get into his car, driving to Monk's, we'll see him waiting at Monk's, we'll see Jerry arrive, we'll see them 
looking at the menu, maybe ordering some food. Then we'll see them, you know, discussing what just happened. And then we'll cut to Jerry's response. That's how Radiant Black is. Radiant Black has so much crap that we do not need that you can just cut out immediately. Yeah, just we, we don't need to see him feeding his dog. We don't need to see a whole page of him feeding his dog. We don't need to see a whole page of him chatting with Nathan. We can have one panel where he's laying down, holding a, a treat out for his dog, and the phone vibrates. Then the very next panel, and it doesn't even have to be like a, a, a whole separate panel. It can be like a panel within a panel. We see a close-up of the phone, and it just has a text from Nathan that says, Hey, are you free right now? And then boom, we immediately cut to them working out on uh, Nathan's powers. Just get right to it, dude. But no, there, there, there's too much fluff. So I, I, I'm a screenwriter. I, I write movie scripts mostly. Um, mo movie scripts are usually between 90 to 120 pages. So my first draft will usually be about 150, sometimes 160 pages. That's that's my first draft. That's where I, I just get everything, like all my ideas just out there and everything's, you know. Then the second draft, I will condense from 150, 160 pages to about 120. And I'll polish things up, make sure grammar, everything's okay. And then the third draft, I'll, I'll cut from 120, sometimes down to 90, 95 pages. So that's basically about 45, 50 pages from my first draft that's just cut and thrown out. That's what needs to be done with Radiant Black. Radiant Black reads like a first draft. It reads like the writer is just tossing everything out there and there's no editor in there to polish things up. There, there, there's too much going, there's too much unnecessary stuff happening. So yeah, we have uh, Nathan and he's testing his his powers um, on a figure. So yeah, we have an entire page where they're just, just kind of discussing about, oh, you know, I guess now you feel like you want to test your powers. Yeah, I kind of want to test my powers now. And then the next page is when he actually uses his powers. And then they discuss their powers a little bit more. And then uh, the third page is Marshall trying to get... Nathan to really boost up his powers by trying to anger him. So we have an entire page of him trying to anger Nathan before the fourth page, Nathan finally unleashes his power. So it's four pages of them trying to get Nathan to really boost up his power that can easily be cut down into like one page, maybe two pages. We don't like, again, like we, we don't need an entire page dedicated to him trying to piss off Nathan. That can be done in like a panel or two. Again, way too much unnecessary fluff. But yeah, uh, eventually they get attacked by Radiant Red and we get a battle and I'm like, oh, thank God, finally something is happening, dude. Like you only introduced this character like t uh, two issues ago and you haven't done anything with him since. Finally, we're having Nathan actually using his powers and, f you know, fighting and doing superhero things. He's a superhero and he hasn't really done any superhero things. I guess in the second issue, he did the whole like bank robbery thing. He kind of stopped that. So that's something. Third issue, he didn't do anything. I mean, I guess he helped change a guy's tires or he tried to change a family uh, dude's tires and that didn't work. So then he just carried the van to um, a mechanic and it's like, all right, that's sweet, I guess. Yeah, I want to read an entire issue about our character having writer's block and then helping take a family to the mechanics. And that's what I want in my superhero comics. <laughs> but finally, we get a fight. Yeah, basically, the, the, the fight leads to a building, and the building starts, you know, getting destroyed, and it starts collapsing, but there's people inside. So Nathan uses his powers to try to keep the building up as much as he can until the people can get freed. And even Radiant Red chips in. I don't know why Radiant Red is willing to, to chip in to help. Because we literally had the scene earlier where Radiant Red's like, I'm going to kill everyone that you love. Like, if you, if I see your face again, I'm going to go after all your loved ones and I'm going to kill them. And you're going to watch them die. And then immediately, each has a change of heart. And he's like, oh, there's innocent people here. I guess I'm going to try to help them alongside Nathan. Even though I literally just told Nathan that I was going to kill everybody he loved. All right, whatever. <laughs> uh, and then we have a twist that um, unfortunately I, I can't talk about I mean I can but I like to keep my reviews pretty much spoil free like I usually like to discuss the first half of an issue and stuff like that and give my thoughts because um, I don't want to spoil comics for you guys I mean I will talk about 
the uh, with the spoiler when I do a review for issue five because I am going to do a review for issue five. I was actually going to give up on this series. Issue four was going to be my uh, my make or break because I was I was pretty much just done. I was like, all right, we'll see what happens. If this is going to be like another issue of him having writers blocked, then I'm out. Uh, but thankfully, we have a, a twist, and I'm not going to spoil what it is. I will just say that it, it's a twist that came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it. And it definitely changes the story in a whole new direction. Unless they completely have an ass pull and retcon the twist, which would be kind of weird. But, I mean, I guess they can do that. But yeah, assuming they don't, we're going an entirely different direction with this series. And hey, good. Something's happening. Great. Finally. Like, finally we have progress with our story. Finally our story's going somewhere. It only took them... The end of four issues to do it, but hey, at least we're going somewhere. Better late than never, I guess. So yeah, that's that's Rating Black number four. All the good stuff happens in the, the second half of the issue, which is unfortunately the half that I don't want to talk about because I don't want to spoil anything. But I will say that the second half of the issue is good. The ending is very interesting, and I'm, I'm kind of interested to see where they go with it. Yeah, again... This series still suffers from too much fluff. Hopefully that changes. Like, just, dude, like, I I don't necessarily want to blame the writer so much as the editor. This this reads like a first draft. This reads like a draft where you just, you're throwing everything in the kitchen sink onto the wall. And you're just, well, not even that. Because it's not like it's a bunch of ideas happening. It's more like you have one idea and you stretch the hell out of it for multiple pages when you can easily condense it down to a panel. So it, it, it's, it's more like, um... So that's like you're throwing out a bunch of ideas and more like you're just writing entire scenes instead of trimming a scene down to just the meat of the scene, just what we need. Like we don't, for example, we we have a scene where two characters uh, discussing something. We can just cut to them immediately in mid conversation talking about what they're, you know, about whatever the discussion is. And then we, we end it. Like, for example... In Radiant Black. My idea was uh, we have uh, the phone vibrates and there's a message. And as Nathan it says, hey, are you free right now? I want to test my powers. Or, you know, just like, hey, are you free? And then we immediately cut to them testing their powers. Instead, in this issue, it's, hey, are you up? Yeah. You got any plans? Oh, uh, not really. There's a marathon on this channel that I kind of want to watch. You know, I never want to miss this, you know, movie. Oh, well, you know, I was thinking about maybe, you know, practicing my powers. I, are you interested? And he's like, yeah, sure. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Let's, let's go test out your power. We don't need that. All you need is a simple, hey, I want to test out my powers. Are you interested? And then boom, we immediately cut to them in, in the woods testing out the powers. So cut out all that fat. Seriously, come on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Radiant Black, issue number four. It's, I'll, I'll give it a five out of ten. And that five is just... Because of the um, the the, la the second half of the issue, the first half can be really condensed. Second half is is, is better than the first half. Um, but yeah, again, this series still suffers from too much too much fluff, too much fat. You got to trim all that out. Just get to the, the 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 meat of the story. Just just get to the 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 core essence of the story, like what we need. You don't need to spell out every little thing for us. You don't need to drag out mundane scenes of a character feeding his dog for an entire page you have 20 what 20 21 pages in a comic book to tell your story make every single page count make every single panel count give us as much awesomeness as you can within those pages instead of giving us a bunch of nonsense that we don't that doesn't contribute to the story him feeding his dog doesn't contribute to the story 13 pages of a character suffering from writer's block has no contribution to the story Cut all that crap out. I want I want this series to succeed. I want this series to get better because I'm a huge Tokusatsu fan. I love Tokusatsu stories. And this feels like it could be like an American common writer. But it needs a lot of work. And a lot of that comes from just trimming things out and really focusing on what you want in this story. But yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Tell me what you think. And if you have any recommendations, let me know. And I hope to see you next time later so what'd you guys think of that video i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys haven't already please subscribe hit that bell for a notification leave a like if you enjoyed the video and if you didn't enjoy the video thank you for watching it this far and i hope the next video is more to your liking 
feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see. And I hope to see you guys next time. Later.